Okay, <clears throat> video number three and the last video on planning and scheduling. In this video, I will be discussing the concept of rolling wave planning. And I'll try to explain it in a practical way to try to help you visualize the concept. Let's say we have a project life cycle. Let me stand here. And for simplicity, I'm not gonna use the previous one. I'm just gonna use a life cycle from concept to closure. And in this case, I'm gonna break it down into five stages, less, for example, okay? Just to demonstrate the points. Now, let us say you are a project manager, experienced project manager, or at least have some good knowledge in project management, an organization that have the project life cycle defined, and your manager or uh, your team leader come into your office and said, uh, Mark, I need you to manage a project. We have a concept that has been approved by management at gate one, and we need you to manage this. And let's say this is a project that could last maybe for two, three years, or less maybe, or a year, uh, whatever the case might be, obviously, the, the emphasis here is not just something could be done in a week or two, it's a project. So we are at a gate one, which is the gate that approved the concept and management, they have appointed a sponsor and the sponsor come to you as a project manager and ask you to lead this project to completion. So what should you do? Well, what I would do, and I'll try again to explain in a visual way, Obviously, I am here. Yeah? I've just been authorized to lead this project. So what I would do? Obviously, if I have an office, or maybe you live in a place where there's nice weather, you can go out and have a coffee outside, take a walk, uh, go take a shower, depend how you think at best. <laughs> uh, you need to start to think on your own, potentially, and said, okay, now I know this organization, I know what this organization project lifecycle model are, I know how to manage project, I know this project is going to be five phases, one, two, three, four, five, or five stages, based on our historical uh, standard organizational project management system, the standard methodology we follow in this organization, we're going to have this. I probably also know a project like this from here to there probably take, let's say, 18 months. I just throw a number there. So now I need to think about how do I go from here to the end. I need to begin with the end in mind. Seven habits, right? So I need to go from here to there. How do I go there? Well, obviously, I know I need to break down the life cycle into five step, steps, stages. I know overall it could be about 18 months. I don't know for sure yet. It could be 19 months. It could be 16 months. It could be 20 months. And I would say I need to come up with a rough plan, very high level plan. Here I need to pause for a second and go back to the question that triggered these three videos. One of the people who are following our YouTube channel, the Applied Project Management channel on, on YouTube, which is obviously if you're seeing this video, you are already there. Um, basically asked the question, he said, Munir, I've been following you and I've been following your methodology. When would you start using MS Project? I guess you can use Primavera or anything else, but in this case, he like, apparently this person used uh, MS Project. When would you start using MS Project? Would you start from the beginning or when you get, let's say, this is the execution here or implementation stage, you will wait until that time. Obviously, the answer is we start here. So, assuming I'm done with my thinking, I can open my laptop, my computers, my tablet, and go into MS Project, and I will put the project life cycle. Probably, if I come from an organization that have a certain level of maturity, I probably already have a template schedule from a previous project that look for similar project. Uh, I can borrow copy, paste, and start to modify. If we don't have anything, then I have to start from scratch. So I will have to do maybe more guesswork than using some historical references and benchmarks. 
So in this case, I will start, I'm here, I need to start to think about the whole project. And that's what I'm trying to say with this large arch. I need to think big picture. I need to think how to go from here to there. And based on this, I know I'm going to have five phases. I know this phase might be two months, this phase might be two months, this phase might be four months, okay? Uh, this phase might be 12 months. So what we have, 16, 18, so 20 now. And maybe this is two months. So now it's a 22 month schedule. So may, my guess, right? 12, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 22 months. Roughly, of course, I'm just throwing number in here to just to demonstrate a concept. And obviously I chose 12 months here because that's probably the implementation stage, which is the largest stage. And the one that requires the most significant effort. So I might have an idea, I said, okay, now I need to start to plan. If I go beyond scheduling, uh, obviously I would say, look, I mean, in addition to this, I might have certain key date I want, I plot them on the schedule. So again, the answer to the question of the, uh, uh, of the person who, who made a comment, is that definitely I'll start in this case. But notice, I don't have much detail. All I have is rough duration, how many phases, and the approximate duration for each phase based on guesswork or historical data uh, or some benchmarking from somewhere. And with that, I have that information available for me. I'll start my schedule, okay? But next, what do I do? Well, next, obviously, I, I'm not talking about people here. If, if it's a big project, I need to start to mobilize some people to help me. Maybe I need to have a planner to come work with me. Maybe a scheduler, maybe a cost estimator. Uh, whatever resources I need to help me, to join me on the project management team uh, or the project team, I need to start to think about phase one. So now I need to say, okay, to help me manage phase one, what do I need? I need to start, in this case here, I need to start to plan the phase. This is a process group repeating, guys. I need to plan the phase. So I need to determine, do I need any people to help me manage this phase? And maybe the answer is no. I can do it on my own. Or maybe I need one or two people. Or maybe I need 10 people. Again, depend how big the project you're working on. So I need to plan this phase. And that's what you see here in this red arch. Now, before I go into more detail, let's say we have done the work over here. We have done the work over here, and I'm just about ready to finish this stage. I need to go to the next stage. What do I do? Now, I need to assemble my project management team as well and plan the next phase. And then, before this phase is over, I need to plan the third phase. And then, before this phase is over, I need to plan the third stage. And then, of course, the final stage all the way to completion. So the blue here is more of a high level view, which is project view. The red here is more about phase or stage. Let me use the word stage and stick to it. This is a stage plan. And of course, in this case, I'll be focusing on what do I need to get this stage done? What do I need to get this stage done? This stage and this stage and this stage. However, usually, even though two months is considered a short period of time, I might not be able to put a lot of details in here. Obviously, in this case, now I'm gonna, let's say this is a feasibility study. Now I will be able to break down this feasibility study. Said, okay, the feasibility study will take me about two months based on the blue. But now I need to plan the feasibility phase and come back said, okay, I need to do a market analysis, I need to do financial modeling, I need to do scheduling, and I end up determining that this stage will actually be two and a half months. So now instead of two months, it's 2.5 months. So you know, what I'm, while I'm planning this stage, I would have the freedom to update the duration that was planned before. Because remember, the plan before was a big range. So usually this one probably plus or minus 50%. 
So obviously, if I go from two months to two and a half months, that's probably uh, perfectly acceptable in the organizational norm. If I go from two months to five months, then uh, maybe I did not do a, so much of a good job when I did the high-level plan, or maybe I'm not experienced, uh, or maybe I don't have any historical data, uh, and then my estimate was just nothing better than a guesswork. So while I planned this phase, which is the, the red arch, we determined that it's two and a half. Why? Because now I have broken that stage work into the major component. So if this is a feasibility study, again, we could be doing a market analysis, we could be doing risk analysis, we could be doing uh, location uh, analysis, uh, we could be doing uh, legal regulation, uh, we will have the financial modeling, the cost and schedule estimate, and there are a few other things that we will do on feasibility study. So when we plan that stage, we determine two and a half months, which is fine. Then when we do this phase, again, maybe this is the two months was good. This one end up being three and a half months. When we come here, this end up maybe 13 months and maybe this end up being uh, six weeks. So when we come to plan each stage, the estimate will be updated based on the high level estimate. And then I will be able to update the detail for each phase. So in a way, what you're saying here is like what I said in the previous video, is not just we do one estimate. It's not the process group are not phases. So we don't plan once. Planning is happening throughout. This is why when people think planning is a phase, you could have a phase that you can call it planning phase if you like, but the planning action is happening from start to finish in every phase. So why do we call this rolling wave planning? Let's go to the third step. And I will use green this time. And let me do some erasing here to make it just clear. Now, two and a half months, remember we said the first stage was two and a half months. Two and a half months I have the stage work divided into the major deliverable of the stage. So as we mentioned before, we could have maybe six packages to do, uh, market research, uh, uh, financial model, etc., etc., etc. But now each work package might take three weeks or four weeks. Some of them could be happening in sequence, some of them could be in parallel. So what we do typically, and in construction sometimes we call it a look ahead schedule. Because this is where you start to look ahead. But how far do we look ahead? Well, depend on what type of work you're doing. Usually we look ahead, um, one monthly look ahead, if you are a senior manager maybe, uh, or uh, if you are maybe di directly managing this stage, you probably would want to look for weekly look ahead. So what do we do in that case? We will start to break down this work into weekly packages, weekly work, which mean, in other words, what do we plan to accomplish this first week and second week and third week and fourth week? So we start to break it down into those things and then that could be assigned to the working level team. And uh, obviously this is why it's popular and agile, but it's definitely we use it in construction, we use it in engineering, and everything we do in life, we really have to plan this way because we cannot plan this detail when we do the, when the project manager was assigned of course, you cannot do this level of detail because you do not see that detail. So you have to plan the high level, the medium level, and then the low level. And of course, for the second stage, the same thing. You will do that. And the third stage, and this continue on. And as you can see, it looks like the wave on the beach. And this is why we call it rolling wave planning. So to close this short series and to emphasize the point, a planning is ongoing throughout. Planning is happening at a high level, at a medium level, and at low level. And this is why sometimes you hear the term, for example, schedule level one, schedule level two, schedule level three. Uh, I come from capital project background, so in construction, in construction we might go down to even daily. Obviously, if it goes down to the formal level, they will have to see daily plan. So they might have at the at the Working level, we might even have much, much lower detail than this. Uh, and that we sometimes we use it, we call it level five schedule. So we might go down to that level of detail. 
Of course, how many levels all depend who you are. If you are a project owner, maybe you are happy here or definitely at the red level. Uh, if you are a contractor uh, or, or the one who is actually doing the work, you have definitely to go down to the weekly plan as a minimum, if not daily plan. So, <clears throat> scheduling is like estimating costs, like risk management, like everything else. When we manage project, when we manage project, obviously if we are managing project concept, concept to closure, we're not managing a phase of the project or a stage of the project. If we are managing the project end to end, concept to closure, following a project life cycle model with stage gate, then we need to think of scheduling at the high level. We need to scheduling at every phase. So we, we follow. Over here, we might follow historical data. Over here, we start to follow the process groups for every phase. And then over here, we might even go down to further detail. Again, we could be using historical data or based on the work experience that we have in order to schedule and to plan our project. So to, before we say goodbye, what's the difference between planner and scheduler? Let you think about that. Maybe another video will talk about this. Thank you. Wish you success today, tomorrow, and always. Munir Ajam here. Until next time.